Today, we're gonna to be showing you how to design the treehouse of your childhood dreams. All the materials I'm going to be using for this project are listed in the description below. Climbing trees and making tree forts and tree houses was my favorite thing to do as a kid. I've actually continued to climb trees as an adult and this has been awesome. I've been wanting to do a treehouse illustration project for years. So I'm super excited to share this tutorial with you. Before we get started, I thought it would be fun to look at a few awesome treehouse drawings. Whenever I could find the name of the artist, I've listed their name next to the image. Feel free to pause if you see an image you want to look at longer. When I create a drawing like the one I'll be walking you through today, I generally pull inspiration from several different drawings. I'll include some more treehouse images at the end of this video. Before I start drawing today, I'm going to make a brainstorm list of all the cool, magical, fun objects and design features that I would like to include in my treehouse. I recommend challenging yourself to come up with at least 20 ideas. You don't have to use all of them, but doing this will stretch your imagination in a fun way. Here are the ideas I wrote down before starting my drawing. Feel free to pause it here if you want to look at my list longer. Chico likes tree houses too. For your added convenience, I've included a complete list of steps for this project at the end of this video. Okay, grab a pencil and a paper and let's get started. I recommend orienting your paper vertically, not horizontally. And by the way, please feel free to pause this video anytime you need time to catch up. I have decided to add three yurt-like structures to my treehouse. Notice that I'm adding these three houses to the top half of my page. I'm leaving space below because that's where I'm going to add my tree trunk. The body of each yurt can be drawn with a simple rectangle shape. Then I add a triangle for the roof. Notice how each of these structures is a different size and they each sit at a different level on the page. Now that you've drawn the houses, the next step is to draw any other large structures you want to include in your picture. You can see here that I've added a sky bridge and a lookout tower. Once you're done adding all the various structures you want to include, you're ready to draw the tree trunk and tree branches. Make sure you draw branches underneath your tree houses so that your tree houses don't look like they're floating in space. Okay, we're ready for step four. For step four, you're going to draw a horizon line slightly above and behind the bottom of your tree trunk. A horizon line indicates where the land ends and the sky begins. Okay, we're ready for step five. This is where it really starts to get fun. Now is your chance to add all kinds of imaginative and fun details to your picture. Once you're all done adding in these details, then you can go back and fill in the remaining spaces with tree canopy. Now that I've finished outlining all the main steps for drawing your tree house, I'm going to walk you through some details that I added to my picture so you can get some fun ideas for your drawing. I decided it would be cool to add a circular balcony around my main house. I'm also going to add some support beams underneath and a railing on top. You can see a couple examples of this in these two images. You can see how I'm drawing the circular balcony and railings in front of my main house. Notice how the walls of this house are slightly slanted outwards. I think this gives it some character. Now I'm drawing in the slanting pointy roof, adding a chimney, circular windows, a flower pot that's gonna have some flowers in it, an arched doorway. Notice the diagonal slanting support beams underneath the balcony, and another round window with window panes on the right. How cute is that? My smaller house on the upper left is going to be similar to the house I've just drawn, but with no balcony. Notice how the base of the house is drawn with a curved contour line that wraps around the branch that it sits on. I've tucked my third house behind my main house. I'm drawing this house sitting on top of a straight, flat platform. I just want to remind you that your tree house doesn't have to look like mine. There are so many different ways that you can draw your tree house. You can see here how I'm drawing in the details for my lookout tower. 
And now we're going to take a little pause because it's time for break time with babies. tree houses. Okay, now I'm going to walk you through some other details in my drawing. Here I'm drawing a nice big robust tree trunk. Notice how the trunk gets wider at the base where the tree roots are. Now I'm starting to draw some tree branches. For the tree canopy I'm drawing a series of long narrow wobbly irregular oval shapes. Now I'm adding some gymnastic rings. I'm gradually filling in the open space behind my structures with canopy and tree branches. Adding a hanging lantern here because hanging lanterns are magical. A couple branches popping out in front of my suspension bridge and house on the right. Ooh, this is where I add a clothesline with some clothes hanging on it. I thought it would be fun to add wind chimes hanging from this branch. I'm adding a squirrel sitting on the balcony and a rope ladder. I'm drawing a hanging sign next to the rope ladder. And now for a bird feeder! And a tire swing. Adding some texture to my thatched roofs. Putting some flowers in my flower pot. Now I'm going to draw the climbing slats on the tree trunk. I want them to be kind of crooked because this adds character. I'm really excited about the tiki torch I'm adding here. I love tiki torches! And now I'm drawing a crooked old mailbox. I'm just about finished. I'm just going to add some plants and greenery to the ground and a cute mushroom house and some butterflies. Now that you're done filling your drawing with amazing details, you're ready for step seven, which is to go back and trace over all of your pencil marks with ultra fine Sharpie. This step is optional. It's really a matter of preference. Now you're ready for the eighth and final step, which is to add color. For this part, I recommend using crayons, colored pencils, or markers. It's totally up to you. Da, 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 da. So in summary, here's a complete list of the steps I recommend following for this project. Be sure to stick around and check out my other super fun videos such as steampunk machines, peacock paintings, illuminated manuscripts, banana splits, dragonfly paintings, Picasso portraits, and much more. If you enjoyed watching today, leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Please support all of this amazing art and creativity by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. <laughs> you might enjoy watching one of these super awesome videos next. As promised, here are a few more of my favorite treehouse images. Enjoy!